Carnegie Hall reopens. After a $50 million renovation, the nation's grandest musical treasure house is back. A labor of love for many who worked on it. But I look forward to coming and have my children come to see what I've done here. Charles Osgood reports tomorrow on the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. This is CBS. And whatever your favorite kind of music, there's big cause for celebration tonight as Carnegie Hall reopens its doors. It is just one building in New York, but there was glamour and glitter tonight as Carnegie Hall reopened its doors. Just one building in New York, but as CBS News correspondent Charles Osgood reports, it belongs to the world. As of tonight, Carnegie Hall is born again. Built 95 years ago with $2 million of steel magnate Andrew Carnegie's money, the old place has been restored at a cost of $50 million. Seven months ago, workmen started tearing the hall apart under the watchful eye of Carnegie Hall's president and guardian angel, Isaac Stern. As they began to rip up the floor and tear out the first seats, you know, it was like seeing your child go under the knife. You know, you... <clears throat> It was violinist Stern who, when Carnegie Hall was condemned to death in the 1950s to make room for a new office building, rallied the world of music to save it. After all, Carnegie Hall was more than just brick and mortar. It was and is a legend, a mecca, an inspiration to musicians. I remember when I was a kid in Israel and I was 12, 13 years old, you know, I, I heard already about Carnegie Hall, you know, that one day you got to play there. Since Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky conducted the very first performance on this stage, every great musician in the world has played here. One Sunday afternoon, when a New York Philharmonic guest conductor fell ill, a young 25-year-old assistant nobody ever heard of filled in. His name was Leonard Bernstein. This is my house you're talking about. I mean, I lived here. That Carnegie Hall sound is still there. The acoustics so pleasing to listeners and performers. Wonderful! Our musicians just, they just feel, it's like oh, having an old coat around you. We feel very snug here. Since 1938, when Benny Goodman appeared here, Carnegie Hall has been a mecca for jazz and popular music. The last seven months, the only performers here have been the construction workers, who have worked something of a miracle with their instruments, doing so much in so little time. But then, as Isaac Stern will tell you, this is a place of miracles, where the walls echo to the ghosts of music past. You just listen, and you'll hear Rachmaninoff, and you'll hear Rubinstein, you'll hear Tchaikovsky, you'll hear Mahler, you'll hear Toscanini, and Bruno Walter, Bernstein, Heifetz, Chrysler, everybody. Just listen. They're here. And now that it is born again, Carnegie Hall has not just an echo, but a promise. Not just a past, but a future. Charles Osgood, CBS News, New York. And that's the CBS Evening News. Dan Rather, thank you for joining us. We'll see you here again tomorrow night. Charlie Rose, the latest developments in the Iran arms scandal, and Frank Sinatra reopens the new Carnegie Hall tomorrow on the CBS Morning News. Auditorium in the country, perhaps the world, reopened last night. It was a gala performance, the program ranging from Frank Sinatra to Vladimir Horowitz. And in a few minutes, we'll have the sights and sounds of Carnegie Hall reborn. 
probably got you singing just like Charlie here. We're going to take you to the grand reopening of Carnegie Hall, where the greats oh. of music took a bow, and so did that magnificent building where they all performed. And that, of course, is Carnegie Hall sounding even better than ever. What a great night. If a band of urban planners had had their way, there would now be a 44-story red checkerboard skyscraper occupying a corner of West 57th Street here in Manhattan. That was what they envisioned back in 1959. Fortunately, others had a far different vision, a desire to save the decaying building that was already there. And that vision prevailed. Last night, 27 years and $50 million later, the music world celebrated their victory. Renee Ferguson reports on the big party for Carnegie Hall. It was a night of glitter and grandeur, a birthday celebration of sorts. Carnegie Hall, 95 years old, once crumbling and neglected, now restored and last night, reopened. Reopened with a surprise performance by Vladimir Horowitz. so that Peter Duchin could once again play here. To me, Carnegie Hall, because I'm a New Yorker, just means the sort of nth degree. It's the epitome. It's the acme of the profession. Cellist Yo-Yo Ma played with the New York Philharmonic. Violinist Isaac Stern led the effort to rebuild the hall. This is not the end. It's simply the end of a beginning. A beginning of a great new era for this hall, for those who love music, who make music, who listen to music, who believe in music. Renee Ferguson, CBS News, New York. What a wondrous night. As Isaac Stern said, it's just a, a great new beginning, but what a fabulous foundation on which to build. Hmm? We'll be back. At New York's Carnegie Hall last night, NBC News correspondent Richard Valeriani. After seven months of silence, Carnegie Hall came back to musical life with a surprise. Vladimir Horowitz walked on stage unannounced and played Chopin. Horowitz led off a three-hour program that celebrated the reopening of this famed music hall, which had been repainted and replastered and regilded during a $30 million refurbishing, the first major renovation in its 95-year history. Although renowned as one of the world's premier concert halls for its impeccable acoustics, Carnegie Hall almost fell to the wrecking ball in the late 1950s. Violinist Isaac Stern led the fight to save the building and to preserve its mystique. This is where it is. If you're going to be anything at all, this is where you've got to come. And those who came for the gala reopening included conductor-composer Leonard Bernstein, mezzo-soprano Marilyn Horn, conductor Zubin Mehta, a glittering array of talent cheered by a glamorous audience of celebrities and socialites and just plain music lovers. One architecture critic summed up the renovation here by writing that the new Carnegie Hall is more or less like the old Carnegie Hall, only better. I'm about to make a brand new start of it. Right there in old New York. 
Richard Valeriani, NBC News. Hall that Stern says is as close to perfection as you can get. With all the glitter and glamour New York can muster, Stephen Gere was there. People ask, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice. <laughs> And how do you get to Carnegie Hall tonight? <laughs> Fight your way through the crowd. This was the night this irreplaceable concert hall reopened, with dignitaries arriving in horse-drawn carriages, as others did on opening night, May 5th, 1891. A glittering array of celebrities came to see what $50 million worth of refurbishing had done to enhance this venerable institution, and they came to listen and to marvel that the superb acoustics had been preserved, and to bask in the music of artists as legendary as the hall. Vladimir Horowitz. the talented president of Carnegie Hall, Isaac Stern. Carnegie is not just a concert hall. It's, it's something that has grown. There's a, there's, there's a mystique that has grown about Carnegie. It's not a myth. It's a mystique. Weeks of hammering and painting and carpet laying helped preserve that mystique. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. Stephen Gere, ABC News, New York. And that's our news at 8. Here's Joan with an encore. All right, I love the way that spot ends, so that's great. I would love to have been there last night.